Welcome, honor guests, to the land of TMS. I am the Busybody Baroness, and this is a recap of General Hospital's episode yesterday, Thursday, February 2nd. Okay, let's get started. It was it was a sad episode, and it was an interesting episode at the same time because we had Brits Memorial, and then we had Heather and Esme talking, and Ryan and Esme, finally, they showed them in the same space. So, um... We started off, though, with Cody, Sam, and Dante meeting up with Sasha and Maxie at Kelly's. Sam asked Maxie how she was holding up. Maxie said she could use some good news, so Sam told her that Willow had her baby. And over at the hospital, Nina and Sonny looked in on the baby in the nursery, and I thought that was sweet that they were allowed to do that. You know, that nobody made a big deal out of that. TJ and Austin and Terry discussed Willow hemorrhaging. I'm sorry. Hemorrhaging in the OR, um, but she ended up pulling through. Terry said the samples from the baby's cord and the placenta were being tested in the lab and they would know how many uh, stem cells they were able to harvest. That's when they show Ulbrich and Scott go over into Britt's office and it had been completely cleared out. It was almost, um, you couldn't even recognize that it was her office, it was weird. And that's when Brad showed up with a paper bag and I knew what he had in that bag, I knew it was ice cream in that bag. But Ulbrich asked what he was doing there, and he said he wanted to leave something in memory of all the time he spent with Britt, um, talking about their problems in her office. That's when he started um, remembering how Britt was the only person who would be honest with him, and he could be honest with her. He said he wished that he could have, that she could have confided in him about her illness. And that's when Lisa explains if Britt told him that then his attitudes towards her would have changed as far as like taking care of her and coddling her and you know, something that she wouldn't have wanted. And that's when Scott said that it was time to go. And Scott and Lisa left, and Brad stayed behind for a minute and pulled out the ice cream and two spoons. He toasted the spoons, and when he did that, I cried. It was so sad for him. You know, ABC has so many good actors on General Hospital, and they really do need to utilize them more. I have to remember, because see, I see Brad a lot. He's in a lot of scary stuff, and he's really good in it, but He's really good in drama, too. He's just a really good actor overall, and I wish they would write in a story for him. Um, But he promised never to eat the ice cream or ogle over an an unavailable man without thinking about her. And that's when he packed up the ice cream and left one spoon and left. That's when Laura stopped by to see Finn to invite Violet to join her and Kevin and the other kids, um, Elizabeth's kids. Um, skating. And Finn says she would love that. She, he says, thanks for thinking of Violet. Um, it was so cute. He says she's got a passion for ice skating. And um, thanks to her cousins, she likes hockey. Um, and that's when Finn asked, um, oh, and that's when Laura said she was sorry that things didn't work out between him and Elizabeth. Um, but Elizabeth could really use a special friend, especially now. And that's when Finn asked was Jeff back in town or, you know, what was going on with her. And he immediately says, or what has Nicholas done now? And then that's when he said, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. And she says, I understand. She says the bond that they have, though, um, Elizabeth and Nicholas are harder to break than people may think. That's when we go over to the hallway where Elizabeth lashed out at Nicholas um, for bringing her mother to town to, to keep Esme permanently you know, amnesia, if that's the word. But Nicholas was acting shocked, acting like he didn't know that she was in town. And um, that's when she dragged him into a room and was like, listen, I swear I would have never told you about anything that my mom did to me if I would have known you were going to use it like this. He says that Esme never remembering is for the best. And Elizabeth says she never wanted anybody to go through, but her parents put her through. She accused him of hiding this from her because he knew that she wouldn't go along with it and it was wrong. And she says, thank God my mom refused to help you. And that's when Nicholas says, what's done is done and they're in this together. And um, Elizabeth says, not anymore. She says, I'm done covering for you and your lies. And um, she says that her and her mother, oh wait, what the hell did I write? No, I typed this myself. Hold on. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, yeah. Um, 
she says her mother has turned out to be more trustworthy than him. And she told him, and that's something else that she really couldn't, you know, would never have think that she could trust her mother more than her best friend. And she told him the only thing she need protecting from is him. And that's when she left out the room and he followed her out and grabs her arm. And that's when Finn and Laura came out. And it did look like he was being kind of rough with her because she's so little. And that's when Finn was like, let you, bleh. Elizabeth said, let go of me. And Finn quickly ordered him to let go. And then Laura was looking like, what the hell? And then Elizabeth asked to speak to Finn privately. And I was so glad I hollered at the screen like, yes, would you please tell this man the truth? Whether y'all get back together or not, I think he at least deserves to know that, damn, you didn't get pregnant you didn't cheat on him like don't let him don't let it end like that you know and then maybe they may get back together and maybe they could be friends I honestly do not care who Elizabeth or Finn ends up with put it in the comments if you care or if you have somebody that you would want to see Finn with somebody that you would rather see Elizabeth with because right now I can't think of anybody I think they're fine together fine apart I really could care less but I do find this interesting what's going on between them and I feel like that she should definitely tell him what's been going on but anyway, um, like I said, Laura was shocked and she told Nicholas that they needed to talk too. She said she was scared to death of what, you know, what he's becoming, you know, what Victor has done to him. She told him she knows that Victor has something over him and she's afraid um, that he's making one bad decision from another to another. She, she says the son that she knows is in there somewhere and she's still proud of him and she's not going to give up on him. And that's when Nicholas says he doesn't know where that man went. And she told him to dig deep to find him because she needs to know it's not too late. Nicholas says that she might be right. And he swears he's done with Uncle Victor and he'll focus on being a better father to Esme's baby and the Spencer. That's when he realized the memorial was today. So um, they rushed to try to be there for Spencer. Over in Finn's office, though, Elizabeth, you know, wait, wait before I go on. They don't have a concept of time. You're the mayor. You knew what time that memorial was starting. I don't like that. If you was going, go. If you wasn't, you wasn't. You stopped by to see Finn. You could have stopped by and talked to Finn after the memorial. That's probably what I would have did. But anyway, over in Finn's office, Elizabeth told him that she feels like she's lost her best friend. She said she shouldn't be talking to Finn about this. But Finn was like, listen, we've always been there for each other. And I still care about your stupid ass. So you can pretty much tell me anything at this point. That's when she was like, well, you're a good person and you do deserve the truth. And she says, I lied um, to you and I never was pregnant by Nicholas. And that's when we switched over to Trina, Nina and Sonny in the halls. And she told them that she came to support Spencer at the memorial. And she let Nina know that Curtis had an emergency at the Savoy. I'm not even going to drag it out because y'all know how I feel about Curtis and that damn Savoy. But put it in the comments. What do you think the emergency was? What did Miss Wu need? Extra olives for her martinis? I don't know. But that's why he didn't attend the funeral, the memorial, because he had to go back to the Savoy. Sonny, and, uh, Sonny went to the chapel to see Spencer, and Nina waited around to see about Liesel. Over in the chapel, Spencer asked Jordan what would happen if Esme gave birth in prison. And she explains that social, so, social services would take the um, place you know, either take the baby to the father or another couple or something like that. He says, but what if the father is in jail too? And that's when Jordan was like, why would your father be in jail? Like, do you know something? Did he do something? And that's when they were interrupted because Jordan got a call and she excused herself. That's when Spencer was sitting alone watching that confession on his phone. Now, I have young kids. They, My kids is probably a little bit older than Spencer and Trina. My baby boy is about their age. And he always got them stupid AirPods in. Why Spencer didn't have his AirPod Apple things in his ear? Would you want anybody could have walked in on that? But anyway, Sonny came in and asked, was his father going to be there? And Spencer says, I doubt it. Um, you know, Sonny walked in while he was playing the video, but he didn't hear anything. He hurried up and cut it off. But he says he doubted if his father's father would be there. And he let Sonny know, like, I'm more determined than ever to get custody of this baby. And that's when Sam, Dante, Sasha, Maxie, and Cody arrived at the hospital. They walked, they all walked in together. It was like, it was a real somber time. It was sad. And that's when they talked to Jordan for a second and let them know, let her know that they would be heading to England tomorrow to take a look at Esme's old nanny. And that's when Jordan says um, that the attacks would or seem to be definitely punishing Esme's enemies. 
Jordan also wanted to be sure that none of this information would end up in the invader. And remember, we talked about that in my Sam and Dante video. I had to re-upload it, but um, which I did last night or early this morning. So I did re-upload the Sam and Dante. That's going to come up. That's going to be an issue in their relationship. Um, Sam's mom running the invader. But as everyone arrived at the memorial to the chapel, everyone took their seats and Nina got up to speak first and she did an absolutely beautiful job. Um, she said she got up and spoke because her Aunt Lisa asked her to. Um, and again, she was in that nice dress that we liked so much. She explained that she didn't know Britt for very long, not nearly long enough. But she said she was proud to have her as a part of her family. She says Britt will never be forgotten. That's when Brad got up and spoke as well. Um, he talks about their history, including how Britt was selfish, mean, and back in the day, she set a little girl's baby doll on fire. He said, however, she served her time. She was determined to prove that she had changed. And he looked around the room um, and said pretty much she accomplished that. He said she'll always be his very best friend. Scott and Terry also got up to speak about Britt. And then that Terry eventually asked everybody to follow her. And they went to the memorial wall where her photo was added to the wall of doctors who served General Hospital. Um, I'm wondering, is Epi I know Epiphany was a nurse, but she was going for her doctor. I wonder if they're going to make it like she, I just wonder if Epiphany's going to make the wall. I guess that's all I can say. Um, Spencer didn't go though. He remained behind in the chapel and talked with Trina. He says that he couldn't believe that his father didn't bother to show up. Trina says this day isn't about him or his dad. It's about Britt. And that's when he spoke about the memories that he had about Britt. Liesl spent a moment alone with Britt's photo at the memory wall while Maxie and Sasha, Nina, and Sonny went to see the baby. And it was cute. I was so glad everybody went to see the baby. Um, Laura and Nicholas arrived at the chapel a little bit too late for the memorial and Laura told her grandson that she's sorry and Spencer assumes her lateness is his father's fault, which it was. Um, he asked Trina to give them a moment. Once Trina left, Spencer told his father he's once again hurt him and after all that he's done, he'll make sure that he can't hurt his brother or sister. That's when we went over to Spring Ridge where Heather grabbed the papers Esme was looking over and read through them. She was stunned to see that they were custody papers and asked who gave them to her. And that's when Nick, um, Esme explained that Nicholas gave them to her. He was the baby's father. And Heather explained to her like, oh my God, the Cassidines are rich and ruthless and you have to think carefully about signing your rights away. Esme believed though that Nicholas um, said that he would give the baby back to her once she got out of her legal trouble. And that's when we saw Ryan being wheeled in as Heather warned Esme that men lie all the time. Esme then noticed Ryan and thinks, oh, my God, what happened to Dr. Collins? And that's when Heather was like, no, nah, that's his crazy brother, his crazy twin brother, Ryan. Um, that's when Heather asked Esme about the baby and why she's so eager to give it up. Esme admitted that she didn't want to give up the baby. She said, this baby is the only thing that I have. Um... She says, this baby lets me know that I'm not completely alone. And Heather told her that that's why she can't give up the baby and sign those papers. And Esme promised not to make any decisions until um, tomorrow, the next day, which is probably today. That's when Heather left to speak to Ryan and she was pissed. She said, um, I know that you knew about Nicholas and didn't tell me. Um, she says, Nicholas, after all, is their grandchild's um, father and the cops oh and she told him that the cops were on to him she also explained that Dante and Sam were there and they were looking for Esme's nanny and she was like I assume the nanny knows about you by the look on your face and he pretty much told her yeah the nanny know about me and um that's when she was like okay it's time to bust out of here and take Esme with us so that kind of answered our question about who the that Remember, we were all speculating that maybe Heather was playing double duty and pretending to be the nanny. Well, we see that that's not the case at all, right? The nanny is somebody totally different. And I guess we'll find out within the next coming week when Sam and Dante get to London. On today's episode, though, we're going to see Dex and Joss. He's going to tell Joss that he feels like he messed up her life. Elizabeth is going to be crying to Finn about everything that she did was all for nothing. Spencer is going to be venting to his father. He's going to ask him why he's always coming in second. And Ava and Austin sit down for something. They were sitting down drinking and talking, and she says she thinks it's time to look out for herself. And Chase told um, Brooklyn that he has to be done with this. 
Um, and I think that he's talking about that singing career thing because he's probably going to go back on the police force. But then that's when she says, you mean done with me. He really probably means done with both. But we know that she's probably pregnant. And I, w I hope the writers don't drag this out. Like they, dr they drug out the story of Chase and Brooklyn far too long. We waited for them to get together. That was mad. We were disappointed in that. And now look, they're broken up and she's probably pregnant. Just don't drag it out. That's all I'm saying. I also noticed that Heather um, mentioned that Esme's delivery date was weeks away, which is a good thing because I want Willow and them to be far gone and out of that hospital before them crazy Esme and her clan get there because I don't want nothing to happen to that little baby Willow. Well, all right, you guys, thanks for listening to me. Please hit the like button on your way out. I'm going to go do some work and I'll catch you in the comments.